The whole world is predicated upon numbers. When you get up, the tendency is to want to know what time it is. You can't make a call. You can't receive a call. You can't watch a TV program or listen to a radio station because they all have frequencies. You can't do anything without numbers. But if you got the right numbers, the right 10 numbers in the right order, people over time began to observe that if you were born under a certain number, you exhibit a certain characteristic. So all of these things are defined by the masses of those who had the power of observation. The universal language on this planet is mathematics. The most common number that people have as a life path would be threes and fives. Universally though, the most common number seems to be revered and understood and respected as the number seven, because seven is nature. From seven days in a week, seven notes in the musical scale, seven colors in the rainbow, the seven continents. And in fact, the majority of the founders of religions are sevens. Buddha is born on the seventh. Christ's birthday celebrated on the 25th, two plus five is seven. Elijah Muhammad, the founder of the nation of Islam, was born October the 7th. When a Muslim goes to Medina to make his Hajj in Mecca, he must circle the Kaaba stone seven times and the rite is complete. It's just incredible how sevens, it's God's number. If you look, when a child reaches age seven, it is the age of reason. When they reach 14, which is twice seven, it is the number of puberty. When they reach three times seven, which is 21, then you become legal. Seven times seven is 49, which is called a very important year. So sevens are always very, very important. In fact, if a person owns a dog or a cat, for every one year you make, it's seven years for your cat or your mm. dog. If you look at world history, world history is 70 years. 70 years in world history equals one day. So if you look at the United States, which is only 200 and something odd years old, well, by history and world standards, it's considered a baby nation. So it's just a matter of understanding how these cycles work. And it's not just with seven. Nikolai Tesla said those who understand the three, six and nine also understand the universe. So if you look at an astrologer, you know, each planet is either 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 360 degrees but they all add up to the digit of a three, six, or nine. In the tarot deck, the 12th card is called the hangman. It's a picture symbol of a man hung upside down by his ankle. It denotes mental suffering and anxiety of mind that if a person is not careful, they become the victim or the sacrifice for the plans and intrigues of others. But people in their not knowing or lack of knowledge looked at it as a literal death when it's really a symbolic death. It's a death to an old way. So it says those who understand the 13 is given power and dominion. So if you took the United States, for example, although it is the fourth day of the month, July 4th, this whole structure was predicated upon the 13, 13 stars, 13 stripes, 13 naval ships guarded the colonies, e pluribus unum, 13 letters, the White House, 13 letters, don't tread on me, 13 letters. And so even the word assassination, is 13 letters. So 4 and 13 has always been very important to the United States. If you look at the dollar bill, you got the the eagle that holds 13 arrows, 13 claws, it's got 13 stripes, it's got 13 clusters above the head. If you take the protractor to the triangle on the back of the dollar bill, it's 67 degrees, well 6 plus 7 is 13. So if you then go to the root of 13, 1 plus 3 is 4, a president is elected every four years. Then Washington D is broken into four quadrants, Northeast, Northwest, Southeast, Southwest. The area code to Washington is area code 202. And the zip code is 20002, which is a four. So everything about it is predicated upon the four or it's higher octave the 13. Nature is a whole different energy against made, man-made or contrived time. So for example, the moon is always associated with a woman. So on the day the woman has her first day of her menses, that's considered a new moon. 14 days from her menses is her ovulation, which they call the full moon. So back in the 70s or 80s, it was a popular thing then called the rhythm method. The women knew that on the day of their period, 
All they had to do is count 14 days from the day it started, and they knew that's when their ovulation cycle would be very hot. They wanted to conceive or not to conceive and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Numbers, numbers guide you in everything you do. Five is always indicative of change. The five senses, the five fingers. Five represents freedom, flexibility. It tells me people who are normally born in the fifth month have the ability to walk before they were one years old because they're very smart, very engaging. It is five is ruled by the planet of Mercury, which is the planet of communications, multifaceted, multi-talented, multi-dimensional. A person who has the ability to speak and articulate the thoughts and feelings of the culture, the community, humanity, whatever the case is. People that are born on the 19th or possess the 19th in their name are very, very fortunate. And in fact, they call the 19th the Prince of Heaven. It denotes honor, success, and esteem. It is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning, and then they both fire numbers. If I took your month, your day, and your year of birth, it factors out to a number one. So your destiny number is a one. So if people are not familiar with numerology terms, I put it in a way where it kind of makes common sense. It tells me symbolically you are in the first grade in the school of life. And people who have a one destiny are those are your pioneers, people who are your innovators, people who deal with the first principle. You'd be the first person to do this. So for example, you may have been the youngest of your brothers and sisters, but the first to leave home, the first to go to school, the first to finish school, but there's always going to be something about your life that's gonna make you a number one. And in fact, the year you were born in adds up to 19. Were you aware of that? The numbers basically go no higher than one to nine. So anything above that, they call it the FADIC system, F-A-D-I-C. So if a person is a, born on a 12th, they would be a three because one plus two is three. But, so you always got to go back to the root number. The day you're born is considered the compass that points north. It symbolizes north on your compass. See, your date of birth represents what you must learn over a long period of time by taking the month, the day, and the year. But it is your date of birth that's more immediate. So in your case, born on the 4th, that is your more primary birthday. That is what affects you more than anything. And 4 represents people who like to be different. In fact, I describe 4 as the number of secret enemies because people are either jealous of you, envious, or insecure. And the only reason why is 4s are very visionary. They say and do things way ahead of time. So if you look at Stevie Wonder who did Inner Visions of My Mind with no sight, that album, I mean, just the way he did it, but he's a four. Fours are different. It's like taking a test. Can you read the word? Yes. But do you understand the words? That's a whole nother thing. And the beautiful part about when you go to the birthday, it sets up for me the stage of the foundation. So for example, born on May the 4th, you would be an earth sign with an air number, which means very pragmatic, which is the nature of an earth sign and then very logical in your reasoning, which is the power of deduction. Four rules of mechanical, mathematical sciences, computers, technology, engineering, the media, radio, television, technology in all forms. Four represents people who are very sensitive, very, very unique. But once I know a person's numbers, then it tells me in your case, your numbers are the four, one, and five. So what does that mean? And see, coming out of Harlem, I would tell people that's their attitude, what does it mean? And it means your best days are always on Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday. These are always your power days to do things of consequence. Then it tells me what dates would be important to you, such as the 1st, the 4th, the 5th, the 10th, the 13th, 14th, then the 19th, the 22nd, 23rd, 28th, and 31st of the month. And then it tells me your power months are normally in and around February, June, July, August, and September. There are certain numbers that are found on the plane. The four and the five are found on the physical plane. The physical plane is those who like to examine things, okay? They are the ones who will take something, form, or whatever the case, and work with that in the physical world. The number one and eights are found on the mental plane. Those are the business numbers. You know, they, they're about logic and reasoning and, you know, does it make sense and stuff. This is why one people and eight people uh, appear to be cold or distant because and it's not that they lacking feelings, it's just they have logic. Then the emotional planes are your twos, your threes, and your sixes. 
Those are the ones that express things through feelings, intuitions, hunches. These are your artists, musicians, your actors that get into character that expresses themselves. And then you got finally the intuitive plane and those are the only two numbers of the seven and the nine. Two is always the number of unity. Two is the number that has the balance, day and night, up and down, open and closed, male and female. It's always that, that balance in things. This is why twos make excellent negotiators. This is why twos bring parties together. Two is also a very psychic and intuitive number. It is ruled by the moon in and of itself. And it also rules anything relating to the mechanical, mathematical sciences, computers, technology of the higher mind, things like that. Two is known to go into the smallest of details. So people will say, well, twos get caught up in the minutia. But the way I explain it is like, if you take the nuts and bolts off at the table you're sitting at, or the chair I'm sitting on, all of this will fall apart. So these little nuts and bolts and screws that we don't see appearing obvious are the ones that hold up the bigger picture. Threes is, that represents the trilogy, the mother, the father, the child, the present, the past, the present, the future, the father, the son, the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Three represents creativity, imagination. It is ruled by the planet Jupiter to denote expansion. It denotes lady luck. If you go to an astrologer, the first thing I wanna see is where is Jupiter aspected in your chart in what house, because that particular house will reflect the area of abundance that is likely to come into the house. Three is about expansion. Three is about imagination. Three rules foreigners, foreign countries, foreign languages. Uh, and threes, one of the things I love, well, see, I love all the aspects about the numbers, but threes I like when you tell a three person you can't do something, they don't just accept it as blind faith. You know how you have an authoritative person says, well, you will never succeed. Well, with a three person, when you tell them they are going to fail, they tend to rise to the occasion. That's yeah. one of the strong points I like about three. Yeah, yeah. Fours, fours represents foundation. Fours represents the square. It represents boundaries, but it represents also the genius in man. The chair I'm sitting at, the table you're sitting at, whatever the case is. Yes, three represents the tripod of something for which that word comes from, the first word tri, T-R-I. But without four, that is a foundation. So when you look at news, which is north, east, west, and south, it means it's coming from all four directions. Four represents the foundation. Anytime you build a structure, you always got to look at the cornerstone of anything. This building that we're in has some cornerstone for which the whole rest of this building was built upon. Eights are always very philosophical. Eight is God's number. They seem to be children of fate or destiny. If you talk to an eight person, the person they married would, may not have been the person they had planned to marry, but as fate or destiny would happen, they do. So they refer to even to Christ in the Bible as 888. Nine, you can't go any higher than nine. Nine is a humanitarian number. Nine is universal, global, international, inspirational, motivational, bring out the best of people. Nines like to be the master of their fate though, and the captain of their ship. People will say, well, Lloyd, how do you know when a number is good or bad? Just by their actions. We're so busy looking in somebody else's backyard, we need to look in our own backyard. Every one of us are divinely special. It's just our attitudes towards each other that makes a difference.